Hi, and welcome back. This week, we're going to be working on lessons 17 through 20 in level E, and you'll need your Casio calculator, the math card games book, the math journal, basic number cards, corner cards, worksheets 6a, 6b, 7, and 8, the short multiplication chart, and the activities for learning abacus. So in lesson 17, we will be working on rounding. We'll also be looking at the number periods on a calculator and multiplying a number by 10 several times. The warm-ups are a review of the number periods and rounding, and then we're going to look at how the calculator separates those number periods to make the number easier to read. So on some calculators, they still use commas. On the Casio, they use apostrophes. I think that they're more visible. That's why they put them up higher. Um, the Casio also includes a decimal point, and other calculators don't. So you'll be playing the column rounding, column addition rounding game, which is A64. This game helps the child to see that you can either add and then round or round and then add. Either way, you should end up with the same or very close to the same answer. All right, so back to the calculator. We're going to explore how the constant feature works. This is so that you can do a repetitive function. It's a time saver and it's, it's really fun to use as well. It used to be that kids played with calculators a lot more often in their free time than we do today. With so many devices available for entertainment, children are not as familiar with how a calculator works, and, but yet it's a useful tool. So we will be intentionally teaching how calculators work um, in this program. So the in conclusion asks us if it's easier to add and then round or round and then add. It'll be interesting to see what your child says. Choose a favorite game to play today. And it, it doesn't matter what it is, whichever you desire. So lesson 18 is our first review. So unlike the reviews in the beginning of the book, which were to catch you up to speed on the method, this is an actual review of the content that we've covered so far. I view it as a quiz. Um, there's two versions of the review. This is worksheet 6A and worksheet 6B. Most of the time, I just give one of these worksheets. If for some reason my child did not do well on the first worksheet that I gave them, then I repractice the concepts and play games surrounding those concepts and then have um, them complete the second page as the actual quiz. So I use the first one as kind of a pretest. Um, and I do that the next day. I don't have them take the same quiz the same day. So I want to make sure that the information actually stuck. So you can choose to use these pages as you want. I think most of the time you'll find that you only need one. So the first section of the review is always oral questions. So you should read the problem in the lesson book twice and have your student write the answer without writing down the problem itself. So for example, if the question is 60 times 10, your student would just write down 600. Since the review is fairly short, take the remaining time to play multiply and add, which is game number P34. All right, moving on to lesson 19. In lesson 19, we'll be learning and practicing some shortcuts for adding and subtracting. These do not need to be mastered, but they are very useful. And I think if your child understands the shortcuts, they will use them more often than not. So after a quick warm up with double digit addition, we're gonna look at the numbers in groups. For example, the first problem, is 2,576 plus 2,513. Now, before I learned the math way of naming numbers, I would never have thought to break this problem up into groups, but you can. You can say, okay, 2,500 or 2,500 plus 2,500 is 5,000, and 76 plus 13 is 89. So my answer is 5,089. Speaking of the math way of naming numbers, are you still referring to numbers the math way? We are only on lesson 19. So if your student just started Right Start this year, that's not been enough time to solidify the concept. It's okay to use the traditional names alongside the math way, but please keep practicing with the math way of naming numbers. So our answer today then is 5,810, 9. 
All right, the next shortcuts make mental addition so much faster. For example, 75 plus 39 could be thought of as 75 plus 30, which is 105, plus 9 is 114. The next shortcuts um, is to add, shortcut is to add from left to right, which is kind of what we did with the first example, the, the 2500s, right? I look at this like I do stretching. So I don't want to walk around stretching all day long, but it sure helps my muscles when I do, right? So likewise, your student may not choose to add starting at the left all the time, but it does keep the brain flexible to know that this is even a possibility and to do it every now and then, right? So if we're not flexible, we can get stuck in a box and that's true with math especially. Next, we want to explore the subtraction strategy and finish the worksheet. Then you can play the zero corners game today. That is S9. It's really fun, as corners is always. Um, it's S9 in the math card games book. And basically, it's just the corners game, but instead of trying to get the highest number, um, instead we're going for the lowest number. So maybe for the first one to zero or maybe even below zero, right? Maybe we're going into negative numbers. So it's practicing subtraction mentally when you're keeping score. So you might wanna start with say 200 points and subtract the scores that you get. All right, last lesson for this week. In lesson 20, we will learn how to subtract from left to right on side two of the abacus. Now learning different ways of doing something can enhance understanding. And if your child has an efficient way to subtract, just explore this way, but don't insist on changing their efficient method. Likewise, if your child has a learning difficulty, too many options may be overwhelming. So you're gonna to have to make the call on this. Is it gonna overwhelm your child? Or is this something that will actually um, free them up to see that subtraction is actually easy and they can see it in a different way, right? So since most of you did not learn to subtract from left to right, let's take a look at how that works right now. Okay, so here we have the problem 6,800,2,10,9 minus 2,600,3,10,7. So you're going to perform this subtraction um, with your child watching, but you want to include your child as much as possible. So I would ask questions along the way. So first I'm going to enter 6,000, 800, 210, nine, and then we're going to start at the left. So can we subtract 2,000 from 6,000? Yes, we can. But before we do that, we need to check and see, does the 800 need to borrow something from us, from the thousands? No, it doesn't. 800 minus 600, we can do that without borrowing. So I would go ahead and ask your child, do we need to trade? a thousand for over to the hundreds column and they should say no. So we can go ahead with our subtraction. Go ahead and subtract. What do we have left up here? It's 4,000. Okay. Now we're going to subtract 600 from 800. And we could do that, but we do see we're going to have to trade over here and give the two a hundred, the, the two ten a hundred so that it can subtract 310. But we can, we can go ahead and do the calculation first. So we subtract the 6, but now we're going to have to trade. So I'm going to trade 100 for 10 tens, do it simultaneously, and our answer is 100. We can go ahead and indicate that we made a trade by putting that 1 up there. It's not necessary, but it certainly is helpful. Now we can subtract 310, and what are we left with? Nine, and we could subtract seven, one, sevens from the nine, so we are left with a two. So our answer is 4,109.10.2. Okay, so you can go ahead and erase your work and have your student try that problem by him or herself, and then go on to the second problem, the second example. I would watch her do that next example, and if she gets stuck, ask questions. Don't jump right in and, and start moving beads for her, but ask questions like you did for the first example. Are we gonna need to trade? Look ahead, 
look to the next number. Does it have enough to do the subtraction? Then assign the six problems on the worksheet that follow. And then the rest of the worksheet is used for the next lesson. So hold on to that. Don't file it away. So remember to ask your in-conclusion question and then play the zero corners game again. That's it for this week. I hope you have a great one and I'll see you next time for lessons 21 through 24. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.